الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani channel It is reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said Send durood upon me in abundance Because it reaches me Sallu ala al-habib صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Let's all make good intentions. Because it is reported in the Hadith of Baraka that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has mentioned the intention of a believer is better than his action. So the more good intentions we make, the more reward we get in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we need to make good intentions in order to benefit from our good actions. Today we're going to have a discussion on our topic about the adab of dua. The adab of dua. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us how to make dua. Sometimes we make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. For months, for weeks, for years, we're making dua. We're making dua in abundance in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. But we find our dua is not accepted. We don't see any change in our lives. But we keep on making dua. We say Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the dua is a weapon of a believer. Dua is a backbone of ibadah. But we made dua so much, but we don't see any change in our lives. So today, we're going to discuss things that at times we do not take heed of them before making dua or while we are in dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, وَعَلَمُوا أن الله لا يستجيب دعاء من قلب غافل. Oh people, know that Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept a dua from a headless heart. Allah Akbar. Know that Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept a dua from a headless heart. Now we ask ourselves, are we headless? Are our hearts headless? What do we do in our daily life? What is a lifestyle that we're living in? Are we headless in our hearts? Beloved viewers of Madani Channel, when we make dua, when we use this great weapon, this great means of communicating to Allah Azza wa Jal, how do we use it? When we make in dua, we must remove all the worldly thoughts in our hearts. We must remove all the worldly thoughts in our hearts. Focus only on Allah Azza wa Jal. Have only Allah Azza wa Jal in our hearts. 
Sometimes we're heedless. Of this by, we make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa we think of our businesses. We're making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, but we're thinking of our family. We're making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, but we're thinking of something that happened at school, or at varsity, or something that happened at home, or something that happened while we were walking towards the masjid. Or we're thinking of so many things. Now, how do we expect our dua to be accepted? We but we talking to Rabbul Alameen, Allah Azza wa And we have so many things in our hearts. Beloved viewers of Madani Channel, if we want our du'as to be accepted, we must remove the adab. Is that we must move the worldly thoughts, the worldly things from our hearts. Like we know, in everything that we do, in everything that is done, there is always rules and regulations of how to do it properly. For an instant, if one cooks a meal, he cooks a beautiful meal. And in that beautiful meal, he forgets to put the salt. Or he neglects putting the salt. He does not put the salt into the meal. The people that are going to eat that meal, are they going to enjoy it? They're not going to enjoy the food. Now what happens is, because he had left the salt, now his hard work is going to waste. Not comparing it with dua, but just an example for us to understand. So if we want our duas to be accepted in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, we need to do it properly. First, remove all the worldly thoughts from our hearts. Then plea in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, our du'as will be accepted. It is said, Inna Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum Walaki yanduru ila kulubikum wa a'amalikum. Allah Azza wa Jal does not look at your faces. He does not look at your bank balances. At the time of dua, at the time of dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, he does not look at who is more handsome than who, who is more wealthier than who, who is richer or who is poorer. At the time of dua, this does not work. That is why we say, remove the worldly thoughts from our hearts. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla does not look at how much you have in order for Him to accept your dua. But He looks at what is in your hearts. That which is in your hearts and that which you do, which is your actions. A'malikum, your actions. That is what Allah Azza wa Jalla looks at. So when we are pleading, when we are communicating with Allah Azza wa Jal, when we are asking Allah Azza wa Jal, He does not look at anywhere else, but He looks at our hearts. So if our hearts are felt with Allah Azza wa Jal, there's a very high possibility that Allah Azza wa Jal accepts our dua. But if our hearts are felt with hatred, you're making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, but you are hating someone in your heart. You're making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, but you are cursing someone in your heart. Then how do you expect Allah Azza wa Jal to accept our du'as? Beloved viewers of Madani Channel, we need to stop being heedless of our hearts. Like the first narration that we have mentioned, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah azza wa jal does not accept the dua. He does not accept the dua from a heedless heart. 
So let our hearts not be heedless in order for our du'as to be accepted in the court of Allah Azzawajal. Another thing is that the place, the body and clothes that are used must be clean. The place where one makes a ibadah, where he's going to make dua, that place has to be clean. The clothes he's wearing, they have to be clean. And his own body has to be clean. When we mean clean, they can be washed, but they can have najasa on them which makes them not permissible for you to use them when you're making ibadah. So we should not be heedless of these things. Whenever we make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa whenever we make ibadah, we must always make sure, because it is narrated also that the dua itself is ibadah. So when we're making this ibadah, we have to make sure that our clothes that we are wearing, they are clean, accordance with Sharia. Our bodies are clean, accordance with Sharia. And the place, the body, the place, and our clothes. We make this that we do not become neglectful of these things. Inshallah Azza wa Jal. If we make our dua, it will also be accepted in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. In another hadith, which has been mentioned, that comes to mind when we talk of cleanliness, that Allah Azza wa Jal is pure. Allah Azza wa Jal is pure and He loves pure. He loves that which is pure. And in another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that cleanliness is half of Iman. So we see how important it is to be clean at the time of ibadah. How important is it to be clean at the time when we're making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Beloved viewers of Madani Channel, let's not become heedless of these things. And furthermore, we are told that make a good action. Make a good action before making dua. Make a good action before making dua. Like the ulama ikram they will tell us. Like our ulama ikram. What they used to do. They will perform two rakat nafil and they will make dua in the court of Allah Azza so you make the two rak'at, then you make the dua after that. You make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa First, you must make a good action. Do something good. Please Allah Azza wa If you want to ask in the court of Allah Azza wa let's do something good. In order that our duas are accepted. And inshallah Azza wa Jalla, if we practice this, if we practice this, we will be successful in our du'as. And further, food, clothes, and the income must be halal. Food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, and our rizq, our sustenance, our income, what we live on, it must be halal. We work so long hours to provide for our families. We work so hard to provide for our families. But is those earnings that we earn halal for us? Because through those earnings, we eat, we feed our children, we support our families, we wear clothes bought with that money. 
we give charity from the same money as those earnings halal for us. If they are not, then also that could be a means of our du'as not being accepted. So for our du'as to be accepted, we need to make sure that our food, clothes and our income, they are all halal. And we hear that a person who is unclean, who said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. But, وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ The food that he eats is haram. And the clothes that he wears are of haram. And that which nourishes his body, that which gives him energy, the food that he eats is haram. Then how, how is his dua going to be accepted? If the clothes are haram, the food that one ate is haram, and everything else is haram, then how is that person's dua going to be accepted in the court of Allah? Because in that state, we can't even make a hadada. We can't. First, we have to be, Allah is pure. And He loves that which is pure. But now, if we come with impurity in the court of Allah Azza and expect Allah Azza wa to answer our du'as, my beloved viewers of Madani Channel, we have to take heed of all this. We have to make sure. We must make tawbah. One of the things is, we must make tawbah. Repent in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal before we make dua. Before we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for anything, we first confess our sins. Oh Allah, I have done so and so. I have done such and such a wrong. Ya Allah, please forgive my sins. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Then after that, only ask for the fulfillment of, of our needs and our lawful desires in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Beloved viewers of Madan Channel, like we've said, if the food that we consume, if the food that we consume is not halal, the clothes that we wear are not from a halal earning, or we never got them in a halal way, then how do we expect our du'as to be accepted? One of the rules, one of the adab of du'as, of du'a is that the food we eat, the clothes we wear, they must all be coming from halal sources. Like we have said, a man who said, who called upon Allah Azza wa Jal, and he calls in abundance in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, but then his clothes are from a halal earnings. The food that nourishes his body is from halal, is from haram. The food that he eats is haram. The clothes that he wears, they are all from haram earnings. Then how is his dua going to be accepted? Beloved viewers of Madani Channel, we want, we make dua so many times in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. We do, because we need Allah Azza wa Jal. We all need him at all times. On our daily life, we need Allah Azza wa Jal. Every minute of every second, we need Allah Azza wa Jal. But then we find that we ask Allah Azza wa Jal. As he says, ask, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran that we must ask of him. We must ask for him. We must ask from him. He shall grant us. We must ask and he'll give. But then 
to ask Allah Azza wa Jal there are things that we need to follow. There are rules and regulations that we need to follow. There are things that we have to bear in mind when talking to Allah Azza wa Jal. One of the things is face the Qibla. Face towards the Qibla. As also, this is one of the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when he used to make dua, it is reported that at times when he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua, he used to face the Qibla. So we must also follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and face the Qibla when making dua. The heart must be present in the dua. Very important. The heart must be present in the dua. Which is one of the rules of the adab of making dua. We make dua, but our hearts are not there. We make dua, we sing something else, but our hearts are saying something else. We asking and begging in the core of Allah Azza wa Jal with our lips, with our tongue, but our hearts are not testifying to what we say. So if we want our du'as to be accepted, to follow the adab of du'a is that when one makes du'a, when one he is making du'a in the core of Allah Azza wa Jal, his heart must be present in the dua. His heart mustn't be elsewhere. Another thing is, we must praise Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning of the dua and praise Allah Azza wa Jal at the end of the dua. We praise Allah Azza wa Jal. We send salutations upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We send durood in abundance in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then we make dua as there is no one who loves his praises more than Allah azza wa jal so we praise Allah azza wa jal then after praising him and saying is ascending durood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then only we make dua then after making the dua we praise Allah Azza wa Jal. Through this, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, our du'as will also be accepted. So beloved viewers of Madan Shalom, the things that we have discussed today, let's try and remember them and practice upon them. Take heed on them before we make du'a. The things that we have heard today, the things that we have learned today, let's try and practice them and take heat upon them. Whenever we make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, we must always take note of these things. Let's ask ourselves that we have been making dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal for so long. Have we been following these things? Or have we been neglectful of them? If we become punctual in them, in following them, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, our du'as will be accepted in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all our du'as and fulfill all our lawful wishes. Ameen bijahi nabi al-ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Du'a, the essence of ibadah. Du'a.